Hi everyone, in today's App of the Day video, I want to show you Google Classroom. Now, it's an app for mobile devices on iPhone and Android, and you could also access it on the website as well. And it's a lot more powerful online, so if you have access to it on the desktop, I have an entirely separate video about Google Classroom using a computer. But this is going to be focused just on the mobile app. It's pretty much identical on Android and iPhone. So I'm going to show you from a teacher's perspective how to create multiple classrooms, how to create assignments, how to create quizzes, basically everything you need to know about the Google Classroom app. And I'll show you as a student how to join an existing classroom that a teacher might invite you. And if you watch the video as a student, you might also see how the classroom is created. So I might make it easier for you to complete assignments and just use the app generally. Let's jump into the phone so I could show you Google Classroom. Go ahead and look for Google Classroom app in your iOS, iPhone, or your Android device. And it actually has a far better rating in the Android because Google owns Android and they own Google Classroom, but it works fine on the iPhone. They're pretty much identical on both platforms as far as the functionality of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and press open on the app here. And here you have to press get started on the very first page. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then it's going to take me to this choose an account. Now you have to choose a Google account. So if you don't have a Google account, if you don't have Gmail or YouTube, you don't have one yet. Go ahead and sign up for one. I already have one. I have multiple. I'm going to make sure I choose the one where I want to join a class or create a class with this account. This is very important because if you switch accounts, the class wouldn't be there anymore you have to do everything under the same Google account. So add your account here or choose from a list here if your phone recognized that you already had an account. And this is basically the home page. Now, if you're a teacher or a student, you still get to the same page. Now, what you want to do is press the plus sign right here. And if you're a student, you would click join a class and it's going to ask you for the class code that your teacher should have provided you. And as a teacher, that's what I'm going to show you now. Press the plus sign and instead press create class if you haven't set up your Google Classroom. If you set it up on the desktop, all the information will be here already. So you could actually jump in and edit right away. But let's go ahead and just create class from scratch. It's going to tell you that your school has to sign up for the G Suite account here for education before you could use it. So if you've done so and your school district has done this, go ahead and agree and press continue. And really the only thing you need to put here is your class name. So let's say this was geography. I could type in the name of the class and I could leave the rest blank. You could always come back to this page and put additional information here. I'm going to press create on top. And now my first class has been created and it's right there, geography. You could see it right on top. And it already recognizes every time you put known words like science or math. And it picks a background for you. So it just chose a globe background for me in this case. And this app is basically the same as the Google Classroom website where you have three main sections. You have stream on the bottom, classwork in the center, and people on the bottom. So let me show you what those do. Stream is basically a Facebook wall, like a social media wall. You could go ahead and share any information here with your class. So you could say, welcome to the class, and just basically go ahead and post on top. You see that airplane icon? If I press that, it's gonna post it on the stream, so on this wall, basically. And my students are gonna be able to see what I said here when they join this class. And you could always press the three dots here and edit the post here. And you can make sure all students could see it, or if you had other students, it will be underneath the all student mark. So that's how you would edit it and only show this to specific students. And if you have multiple classes, they'll show up here too. So you can make sure it's only being shared on that wall. So that's kind of how you use this really for announcements. This is what the stream is for, welcoming people, making announcements and just general information would happen on the stream. Then you have the class work icon. Let me go there. And this is where most things are gonna happen. So let me press the plus sign and I could add assignments here. I could add questions, material, or I could reuse previous posts that I've created. I could also press topic here and break up my class into different topics. So let's say this was all about Europe. So I'll type in Europe and this is the section about geography but we're only going to cover Europe. So it's going to break it up like this. And then I could press the plus, add another topic this time. And I'll do Asia here and I'll press done. And it's going to have multiple topics. And this is just a good way you think of it, that you have class as the big picture and then you have topics inside of that class. Now let's go ahead and add an assignment. Press plus and add an assignment. 
let's say this is just naming countries here. I could assign points to it out of 100. I could assign a due date. And under topics, I'm going to put it under Europe here and I'll press save. And I want to make sure on top it's under the class geography that's selected. I don't have any other classes yet and it's assigned to all students or I could assign it to individual students and I could press that airplane icon again on top. And as you can see now under that category, I have an assignment. I could do the same thing with questions and material. Let's do material this time. Let's say I wanted to talk about, I want to show them a world map here. I could assign the topic again or leave it as no topic. I could press save. And on top, I have an attachment icon this time. I could press that and I could get access to using my camera to just uploading a file from my phone. Or you could use Google Drive, which makes everything simple because everything is in your Google Drive. So if you select this, you could choose a Google Sheet, for example, or one of these folders, like I'll jump into this classroom folder and things will be here if I uploaded it here. And you could use the Google Drive app or the Google Drive website to organize all your information on this page so you have everything there. Once you make that selection, let's say in this case, I just go ahead and use a link and type in a website URL. Let's say I put in google.com for example, and I'll press add, and it will have that website as the material. And then the students in that case will see that as the material. They'll go ahead and read that and then go ahead and complete this assignment here. And I could press the airplane icon and post it on the assignment page. And you could see that one is not on any category. So it shows up right on top. It wasn't inside of those two topics. So that's the classroom icon. And under the plus sign, you could explore more the questions and reusing posts. And then you finally have the people icon. And here it's going to show you the teachers where you could also add additional teacher by pressing the plus sign and adding their email. So if you want to collaborate with other teachers inside of your classroom and you could here add the students by just inviting them via their name or email. And if you do do it this way, let me go back now. Let's say the classroom was complete and you put in all your coursework. Let's go back to the stream tab on the bottom and you could see every activity that I actually did on the other pages will show up here. So you can press these three lines and edit and remove them if you don't want it to be that way. But let's press the gear icon on the top and on the bottom of this page under general, that will show you the class code. So you could actually Go ahead and use this class code here to send it to your students when you invite them on their email. So they just have to press join when they download the app or go on the website and put in this code. And they will get access to all the classroom information that you put in there. Here is also where you could change the description and the section and the room, the things we skipped when we created the geography class. I'll press X. And what if you wanted to add even more classes? You press the three lines on the top left and you have some options here. Under classes, I'll show you that first. It's going to take you to this page where again, the plus sign on the corner is going to allow you to create another class. Again, it's going to walk you through the same things. Press continue. Let's call this one biology and press create again. And now I'm inside of this class where I could again have its own stream, its own classwork and its own people. So totally separate. If I press the three lines on top, I could now see that I have a biology and geography class. And if I go to the classes icon, I could see them here side by side. And each class has the student number right here. So I haven't invited anyone. And it has the three dots here where you could edit or archive it if you don't want to have it here on your page. And press the three lines again. You have calendar, which is going to ask you to either get the Google calendar or do it via Safari. Again, this is far easier on the desktop to use the calendar application to kind of see an overall picture of your assignments and your due dates. And you also have your classroom folder that gets created by default inside of Google Drive. So again, you could use it on a browser or get the Google Drive app to see everything inside of that folder. So I recommend getting multiple applications like Google Drive and Google Docs so you have a good functioning phone here with multiple different apps from Google. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a student here so you see what happens when you add a student. So I'll type in the other person's information and I'll press invite on top. And that other person, I had them sign up on the computer and you could see if I refresh this page, now there's one student inside of the biology class and they just got an email. It didn't even ask for them for a code since the email came right out of this class. But they only joined that class. Each class is independent from the other class. So you have to invite your students to each class and students have to press join or click on your email to join individual classes. 
Now, if I go to people, I have the teacher and I have the student. I just use two different Google accounts, it's both me. I could go ahead and click their name here. And I basically have three options on top. I could press the three dots to mute the students. I could press the three lines here to basically filter things. So when they turn things in or see things that are missing in their assignment, I could go ahead and see that on this page, or I could press the little mail icon to basically send them a private message. So it's really nice to be able to communicate with students one at a time here. And that's the gist of using Google Classroom here on the mobile app. Again, I recommend you watch the desktop version of this because it will give you a lot more options that this is missing. I'm gonna give this app a four out of five just because I think it could be a lot more useful if it has a lot of the functionality of the desktop. But I think for an app to bring a classroom in a virtual world is very, very powerful. And between the classroom app and the classroom website from Google, you have a great tool to work with. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.